Hello, everyone. My name is Rupan Alabashian, and welcome to the uh, free online course on how to become a physician in Canada. This is for international medical graduates. And in the previous lessons, we covered the exams, we covered research, we covered observership, uh, we covered volunteering, we covered continuing medical education, we covered conferences. And online, you can find the free resources on how to write personal statement, how to write CV on my YouTube channel. And I'm going to tell you a bit about lessons I learned from international medical graduates who were able to match. And, and I interviewed them on my channel. I want to summarize them in several slides. I hope it will help you wherever you are. Okay, now let's move to... Okay, lessons learned. So lesson number one, it's persistence game, right? And this is very important. It's something I learned from lots of physicians. Um, if you're an international medical graduate, there is like, you might apply once or twice and it might, it might not work. Uh, it is frustrating. It is so painful. I know. I've been in your shoes. I know how it feels like. I know. I had a similar experience in my residency because I had to switch uh, uh, fellowships. I didn't... Initially, I thought I want something, then I figured out that I want something else. So I went unmatched and I, I know how it feels like. But the second time I applied to a fellowship that I really like and I got it. Uh, so that's a personal example. And if you look through my channel, everyone who made it, they, some, some people made it after several attempts. And uh, there are people in their 30s and 40s and they made it to competitive specialties like general surgery like urology it's out there it's out there it's all there my friend um so it is mainly persistence game i hope my words help you if you went unmatched i'm sorry it sucks i know how it feels like but believe me the one who gets in is the one who is mostly persistent don't get frustrated the same comes for everything in life and the same comes for finding observership the same comes for anything that you want to do it's persistence game you have to do it again and again and again and again Okay. Um, next is networking. I can't emphasize the importance of networking. If you are the best physician in the world and you know and you don't know anyone in the system, uh, it's not going to work. Okay. So networking is very important, and it's something I really um, I was surprised uh, because like I knew some people who helped me. I built a network, and then like when I was interviewing lots of international graduates. Uh, everyone was good at networking, finding people, talking to them. You have to be open. You have to be comfortable with not being comfortable. I know talking to a stranger, it's not an easy thing. Uh, I know lots of people, they don't have that skill and it's something that they need to work on. But if you go through my channel again, you watch videos and you're going to be surprised. Like people who made it, they made it through like someone found a physician who's running a 10K and... Um, and they just like join their research team. Someone found a physician assistant job and they uh, that person opened doors for them. So it's really uh, like uh, different ways. You don't know what, how that person, you're going to open the doors for you, you're going to find them. But once you find them, it's just become compounding effect. That person introduced someone else and that someone else introduced some, another person. So networking, and you have to take the steps in networking. You have to... Uh, go ahead, you have to talk to people, you have to approach people, and you have to introduce yourself, you have to be happy, you have to smile, you have to have good networking skills, okay? Um, because your network is going to help you a lot. Strong letters of reference, very important, very important. When you do an observership, okay, so make sure you show interest you be there early you leave late make sure you read about the topics and the patients you see bring papers talk to the physician always offer to come on the weekend always offer to stay late always offer to do extra work okay uh, that being said that being said i also saw lots of international medical graduate unfortunately are used i'm really sorry to use this word i know that you're desperate when you come here you want an opportunity uh, but don't work for someone six months or one year for free for a letter. It's not worth it. Like, uh, 
at least minimum wage, at least like $13, $14 per hour, like at least something that covers your basis. Um, last year, I helped someone who matched uh, into internal medicine. She was a phenomenal person. And she told me about her story. She worked for one year from eight to five for free. This is crazy to get a letter. And then eventually they like torture her until they gave her the letter. Um, again, that's why I'm doing this course to spread the word, to spread the knowledge. Okay. I was also like, I remember when I came, I emailed one of the family doctors and he said, sure, come to my clinic. I go to his clinic. And then he says, yeah, like I will make you do administrative work. And I said, okay. And then he says, like, can we do this work for a couple of months? And once we see that you're okay, we're going to make you do like more things like taking vital signs. I said, okay. And then like he said, once you're good, we, after a couple of months, we might let you see patients under our, like, so the, that guy wanted me to work for four months for free. Eventually at the fifth or the sixth month, he might let me see patients and then he might write me a letter. And all this for free while I'm being used, okay? So at least get paid minimum wage, okay? So like I went there first day, I went there second day, I felt very anxious. I felt it was not the right thing to do. I felt it in my gut. I emailed him back. I said, I'm sorry, I can't do this. Then I kept emailing, I kept emailing, I kept emailing. The doors open. People trust me. People who never knew me opened the door for me, did an observership, wrote me great letters, right? So please, that's why I'm doing this. I'm doing this to help people. Don't let people use you, okay? You are a physician. You are a person who worked their ass off in their country to become a better version of themselves. You went through luck. You moved country. You switched countries. You came here. You have a skills. You have six years of medical knowledge or seven years. God knows how long, right? So you have an asset and use that asset well. It takes tons of money and tons of time to become a physician. At least get paid minimum wage until you get into residency. And that's why I'm doing this, my friend. I hope you are listening to me. This helps you. Okay? So get strong letters, but also make sure you're not being used. Okay? At least get paid minimum wage. If someone is offering you a free two weeks observership or one month observership, go for it. Okay? Um, but if you're going to work more than that, so get paid minimum wage. Okay? Okay? Uh, exam scores. The moment you write, your focus should be on exams. Okay, exams, exams. Again, different specialties have different cutoffs. For example, from the sense I got from interviewing people who got into general surgery, exam scores were not as important as, as research. Okay, go to my channel and find the interviews. Um, so different programs have different requirements, but it just feels so much easier once you have good exam scores and it's not going to hunt you. It's not going to hunt you in your process. Because when you apply and you have that thingy hunting you in your mind, I wish I did better. I wish I performed well. I wish I had better score. I didn't get an interview because of this uh, score. Uh, so uh, you might get frustrated and it makes the process even scarier and more scary, I would say. Uh, even for me, I had like exceptionally high scores. I was lucky. Um, I didn't get interviews everywhere. I, uh, I got lots of rejections. And I had good experience. I know how to uh, get good letters and everything. So exam scores are very important. Your focus should be on exams. Also, I'm making a living. I know as an international graduate, you're coming here. You have no money. You're going to make some living. You're going to work, right? Uh, so that being said, exam scores are very important. It's going to make your process much more easier. And let's talk about the interview. The interview is also a very important part in your application, okay? So when people, when programs invite people uh, for um, interviews, um, so what happens is on paper, all the people being invited to the interviews are the same. That means they met the requirements of being invited to that interview. For exam, they scored, for example, they scored good on their exams. They had some probably research. They had good letters. They had some Canadian experience. They showed interest in the specialty. They had conferences. So you and the person who scored 100% and the person who scored 80% are on the same on the paper. 
you and the person who have like 10,000 publications and the person who have zero publications are the same on the paper. In the interview, now the person who's interviewing you, their job is to see you as a person, your personality, what do you bring to the program, how you can help them, do you have leadership skills, do you have advocacy skills, do you have other skills? And something I've noticed in IMG is I've been helping people in their interviews for the last four years. I have an interview course. You can check it online in my channel that lots of IMGs have exceptional, exceptional backgrounds. Like some of them, like literally create an organization, have leadership skills, but they don't talk about it. They don't talk about it. And I feel so bad. And after we do a mock interview for 20, 30 minutes, I sit down and I listen to their story. I said like, okay, tell me about university. What are you proud of? What have you done? What are the things, what are the interesting things you can tell me about yourself? And then they start talking about themselves after we do the mock and they are more comfortable. And then like, I figure out they might achieve lots of things and they just don't know how to sell themselves. Your job in the interview is to sell themselves, sell yourself. Okay. The interview is buying and selling a uh, relationship. Let's put it that way. If I go to a, buy a car, the person who's selling the car will come and tell me, what are you looking for? So that's the first question. You as an applicant, you're going to ask the program, what are you looking for? Okay, where to find the answer? The CARMS website. They are telling you each program, they are they have like they have long writing what the things are looking for. Sometimes what you can do also, like program directors' emails are there. Okay, if you are very keen on a specific program and you can email them early, like four or five months earlier than the CARMS, and you can introduce yourself be without being very like aggressive, like nice quick letter. Hello, my name is X, Y, and Z. I'm very interested in your program. Please find attach my CV. I was wondering uh, what are the things that you look for for future applicants uh, in, uh, for international medical graduates to accept your program. Um, you draft an email in that way and you send to the program director, not during CARMS, before CARMS. They might or might not respond to you. And all the program director's emails are online. First, you're showing interest in the program. You're showing that you're keen in that program. You're showing that you want to be specific in that program. And don't do it for all programs. Don't send single email to 100 program directors. Program directors usually communicate and talk and they know it all. They know each other. They meet on a regular basis. Don't do that. Okay? A couple of programs you're really interested in, six months before the current cycle, send an email, ask them, hey, man, what are you looking for? What do you want me to do? Okay? Um, and then in the interview, so uh, so going back to the story, if someone's going to buy a car, the seller will come and ask them, what are you looking for? Okay, you are going to sell yourself as a physician, your skills. Okay, we're going to go and ask the program, what are you looking for? You find that in the CARMS website. Okay, and then you're going to tell them, okay, so I have the skills that I'm looking for. And the skills that they're looking for, again, it's online. If you go to the Royal College website, the physician in Canada should have several hats. And those hats or skills are called the CanMed roles. Familiarize yourself with the CanMed roles. Okay. Go to the Royal College website, read about the CanMed roles. As a physician, you need to be a professional, you need to be advocate. That's why volunteering is important. You need to be a scholar. That's why research is important. You need to be a scholar. That's why examination is important. You need to have good communication skills. And that's where networking comes. See, like, because like everyone, when they are invited to the interview, they have good things on the paper. Now your job in the interview to sell yourself to the program director or the person who's interviewing you, uh, that you have the skills that are required under the CanMed roles. Okay. Once you have those skills, you do well your interviews, and this will help you a lot. This will help you a lot. Interview can change a lot. Interview can change a lot because that's where they, they will figure out if you're a, if they're a person who can they they can work with you at 3 a.m. in the morning or not. And again, um, if you don't match, don't feel bad. It's very competitive process, but it is doable. Okay. And you might click or you might not click with the person who's interviewing you. Uh, I, I can tell, say about myself, I do have good interview skills. Uh, but despite that, there are interviews that I messed up things. And you can watch my interview course to find more resources uh, about the interview and uh, prepare for the interviews early. Okay, so this is when it comes to interviews because interviews uh, make lots of difference. And last one thing, uh, a lesson I learned from someone, uh, it also gave me goosebumps. I interviewed this applicant. She was amazing. She was amazing. 
She only got one interview. She had amazing CV, amazing background, amazing story. For some reason, she only one, got one interview and she matched. And she applied to 40, 50 programs. All you need is one interview. All you need is one interview, remember. Um, one of my friends several years ago, she wanted to match in a competitive program, very well-known program. Um, I'm not going to say the specialty and the background. So she only got one, inter three interviews actually. Is, and she wanted that, and she did very bad in two of them. And she did very well in the in the program she wanted to match in, and she matched. Um, kudos to her. Okay, so only you need one interview. Um, don't get frustrated if you don't get many. Okay, final words, be good to yourself. Okay, so keep make sure to take care of yourself, make sure to exercise, make sure to eat healthy. I remember the when I came here in Canada, like Canada is not easy. Uh, I, I got depressed, uh, especially with the weather. I gained lots of weight. I didn't take care of myself. I didn't know what was going on. It is an overwhelming process. Make sure to keep doing the things that you like. Okay, take care of yourself. Very important, very important, very important. If you don't put the max oxygen mask on your face, no one will. Okay, take care of yourself. Eat healthy, exercise, take it day by day. Break it down to small steps. Okay, think about your, think like, and ask yourself, what are the things I need to do to get into the, the cons? And also like, if you go to our website, canmd.net, um, there is a picture that really summarizes uh, what are the things that you need to do. It's research, conferences, CME. Uh, it's something I drew. Uh, uh, I, 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 I created that picture myself. Um, and uh, you need lots of things. You need lots of small blocks to bring them together to build a good position and uh, a, a competitive applicant to match. Um, so be good to yourself, please. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, again, my name is Rupen Odebashian. I'm an internal medicine resident. I'm finishing my residency in Canada. I'm moving to the US soon to become a hematology and oncology fellow. I hope this course helped you. I hope uh, it made your journey, or it will make your journey easier. If you have any comments or feedback, my email is mentioned in the, uh, in the description below. You can visit our website, uh, canmd.net. Uh, I have many free online courses. Uh, you can find them. Um, if you have any question about career consulting or anything else, you can always visit canmd.net and email us at support at canmdmedicalconsulting.ca. Um, and I hope this video helps you. Um, I hope it makes your journey easier. I hope you match and I hope we both meet at the end of the tunnel.